Doug. Shaving a mouse. <laughs> I thought you hated these guys. I do. This one's been in this trap all night. It was actually on its back with its eyes closed, but Doug saw that it was still breathing, so he's warming it up by the vent. And as soon as he revives a little bit more, we're gonna go set him free. everybody in today's video we're going to tell you about another completely and utterly epic fail yeah if you're new to this channel we're two rebels off grid we left denver as fast as we could we sold everything most everything and took up homesteading on outlaw acres farmstead here in cochise county arizona and we have been doing things so as you know, most of you know, we've been working starting the the hybrid adobe bag laying on our chicken coop tower that we're building. And it's been going pretty good, but one of the things that we noticed, and I think we might have touched on this in the last video, that it was just kind of slow. Like we weren't moving fast and we were kind of frustrated with that. So it's kind of cool because I actually ran into our realtor, Clay, from Tombstone Realty. Sorry, the dogs are like, <laughs> inter they're intervening in the movie. I ran into Clay over the weekend at the grocery store and he suggested that we use our tractor more in our build. And we actually didn't really think about doing that. Basically, Doug was hauling five gallon buckets of the wet dirt sand lime mixture back and forth between the cement mixer and where we're working on these walls. And it's not, it's not that far but it's up some steps and you know, it's heavy. So anyway, Clay suggested try mixing it in your mixer, dump it into your, into your tractor bucket and then drive that around and then work out of that bucket instead of lifting these huge five gallon buckets. So we switched that up actually after we saw Clay and how did that work for us, Douglas? And one thing Clay does not know is that Bonnie's out to kill me. I've been, <laughs> Over the past few weeks, Bonnie likes to not break when it's time to break, and she likes to run into things. Who's Bonnie, for people that don't know? Uh, Bonnie's my I'm tractor. I'm not Bonnie. <laughs> Bonnie. Bonnie's the red tractor out there. Yeah. Uh, she's got a little attitude. She doesn't really do things. She likes to accelerate when I'm not wanting to go accelerating, like when I'm uh, going around the chicken tower. She likes to accelerate into the wall if I don't watch it, so... Uh, Clay's idea is uh, brilliant, and we started implementing that on the bags. Uh, yeah, it's shaved off. I think we, we calculated it because we're tracking our time, and it basically cut our, our building laying bag time basically in half, right? Yeah, because before we were just using the mixer one batch at a time, and then mm -hmm. I'd haul it up with, you know, three buckets to bring it up into the bags. But uh, with the... With the tractor, we can do three entire mix loads in mm -hmm. the bucket and then prop it up to like waist level so it's mm -hmm. ergonomic and stuff and a lot easier to get that dirt from there into the bags. Yeah, and then I can help too because I can't, I just can't physically, I can lift a five gallon bucket full of wet dirt, but I can't lift it up and over my head to dump it. Doug can do that, but I felt like, oh gosh, I'm not helping as much as I could. So with us working out of the tractor bucket, it's a lot easier because I can use a smaller bucket and scoop and scoop and scoop and help out. So um, we're going to tell you what happened to us today. We had something really bad go wrong today. And there's a lot of you that are going to say we told you so. And we and we know that and we, we kind of knew that this could happen. So stick around to the end. We'll show you a picture of what happened and then we'll tell you a little tiny bit of a story of... Uh, of our epic fail that we mentioned earlier. Yeah, and it appears like <clears throat> the weatherman, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what radar he's watching, but he said four nice days, two days ago. It was like when we did the last video, he's like, the next four days are gonna be awesome, right? So I'm up there working and then all of a sudden, 
the thunderstorms roll in and, and I'm working in lightning and thunder and rain and wind and all this stuff. So I had to retreat back down to the trailer and call it a day, but that's how it's been for like the past three days. And yeah. then I think, uh, it's just very unpredictable weather here. Mm -hmm. it's, and it doesn't help that we're at over 4,000 feet in elevation. So, and we're exposed up here on this hill. So everything, the wind, there's no, nothing grows taller than three feet around here unless it's in a wash. And so you're out there in the elements, you're completely exposed. Um, <clears throat> so it seems like that light gusts of wind that you would see elsewhere in the country is just, uh, it it's a uh, magnified here <laughs> magnified like 30 times over so a 20 mile gust of wind here is enough to you know shake and rattle your rv where yeah you know if i was somewhere else it seems like it wouldn't even phase it yeah but, so the other thing too though like doug and i are not strangers to unpredictable weather we did live in denver for 10 years 15 i lived there for 15 years and the weather, like they say, wait 10 minutes in Colorado and the weather will change. And that's definitely true. And we would get extreme temperature changes. And we're finding that we're getting that here too in these winters. We're fine with that. It's totally fine. But what's frustrating for us is that we can't seem to get into, <laughs> into a rhythm of getting work done consistently. So the weekend on Saturday, which is when we changed our technique on Clay's suggestion, and the day was absolutely gorgeous it was beautiful it was i think upper 60s and not windy and it was just really nice so we got a ton of work done and we were like all right we're ready to go ready to go and then and then we get hit with this nasty gross weather and it's just it's cold it's it was snowing actually earlier today and uh it's just been a little frustrating because as you know if you watched our last video we have baby chicks coming and we have to have that coop ready because sense otherwise, of urgency. There, yeah, there's a sense of urgency. So I don't know what the date is today. It's like the 21st or 22nd. The chicks come on March 6th. So we're going to have to kick it into high gear, but it's hard to kick it into high gear when the weather's like and this. And even then, we're not going to make the deadline, guys. No. So <laughs> we're not going to put it out there that we're going to be miracle workers and get it done in time. So uh, I have no problem having the chickens right over here on the kitchen table as long as they're that big. <laughs> But we... They're not going to be on the table. <laughs> Just let me clarify that so that you're not like picturing chickens all over or chicks all over the tray. We've done baby chicks before and we've always had them in a big plastic brooder box and they'll have their warm heat lamp and all that good stuff. So they're going to be contained, but we know it's not ideal and we don't want to do that for very long because it's around 40 baby chicks. Yeah, so... but uh, I mean, you got a couple weeks while they're still this big before they get this big and then yeah. it'll be out of control in here. Then uh, we're hoping for warmer weather or we hope that we got that building done up there enough to at least get a tarp over the roof or whatever. Yeah, we'll figure something out. You know, we, we've had adversity in our, in our lives before and we always figure out a way and sometimes things feel kind of hopeless, but you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. We're pretty good when we put our heads together. So so yeah, so this weather has been definitely a challenge. Yeah. And uh so things let's just talk about things that we did accomplish up there in yeah. the breaks of the weather. Yeah. Uh, we did get three rows of bags put down finally. Mm -hmm. Uh and with Clay uh his uh recommendation, we've actually it's taken us half as long to put down a row now. So yeah. we expect that when we get a break in the weather, that it'll go fast. The other thing we did do is I backfilled the rest of that um, chicken tower foundation mm -hmm. so that all the piping is mostly covered except the stuff that needs to stick out, of course. Um, we added a second faucet mm -hmm. into the interior of the chicken tower. So if we're in there and we just need extra water for whatever reason, mm -hmm. uh, do some cleaning or whatever, we have a second faucet now installed. And I went ahead up there today and while well, there was a break in the weather, I it, I finished up all the plumbing, except for the little chicken nipples that are going, the chicken cups that are gonna be installed, mm -hmm. but we're waiting until the entire building's complete before we do that. Yeah, and I have to just say, okay. I just have to give Doug a pat on the back and give him kudos. 
because he did a great job on the plumbing and we the cistern is elevated enough to where we have awesome water pressure so that's like i that think was it's better than cool. it was in denver when we were it, working the, in our house <laughs> in our house with city, city water, water. Yeah. yeah so it's pretty good pressure you open yeah. it up and it fills a bucket up like really quick mm -hmm. uh probably maybe half a gallon every 10 seconds or so so that's pretty good yeah i think yeah i don't know what the flow rate is but it's good it's yeah so the plumbing got all done there's a weird uh section inside that you notice we put bags it looks like a t a red mm -hmm. t that is going to be the divider for the three types of chickens our barnyard type mm -hmm. our our two specialty breeds mm -hmm. that's going to be the divider that's going to have a bottle wall that's going to go up about maybe a foot and a half and on top of that's going to be wood to attach the chicken wire that will go all the way up to the ceiling yeah. And uh, it'll also have two doors there that will go into each of the specialty chicken coop areas. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Uh, we're going to put a table there. We got to take out the boxes, the uh, nesting boxes, so we know where we're going to mount those and stuff like that, of course. Mm -hmm. But we're not there yet. We're still at course three. <laughs> but we also put down the vents, the concrete vents that mm -hmm. is going to provide air conditioning in the summertime. Mm -hmm. um, yep. One of one set of the vents is in the shaded side of the building, so it will draw air in through a cool area. And the other two will be facing the predominant wind direction, which is southeast and southwest here. Yep. So it'll bring, the idea is it'll bring in air and it'll circulate and we'll put a vent at the top of the chicken building so it'll go up and out mm -hmm. yep. uh, what else do we do we well, put the, the chicken door in yeah we uh, yeah so we actually doug had built out a window frame a, a little kind of a smaller window that we were going to use as a window but he had a change of heart and decided that he wanted that to be like a chicken door where the do where the chickens could come and go um to the outside once the barnyard enough. mix yeah the barnyard mix once they're big enough the guinea fowl and all them yeah uh, they'll be able to just go out we can keep the main door shut so big predators can't get in there and then mm -hmm. the little door will be open with a rickety ladder that most things won't be able to climb up probably a good rattlesnake could get up there but yeah. uh we'll see there's going to be a door for it too built but we probably won't do that until the end of the project yeah uh so that's all stepped out around the circumference on top of the third layer of bags so it's ready for putting in bags to cover all that and yeah. after those are all covered the vents and the chicken door uh it's going to be continuous bags going around pretty much and, mm -hmm. except where the door and the bottle wall will be mm -hmm. we should be able to want that out hopefully but uh let's continue talking about the weather today <sighs> Uh, I mean, last night, I think about five o'clock, we got that little hazardous warning message from, wind the, warning. from the, from the weather channel or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, so we didn't I, have any and it time. was already, it was already dark here, yeah. so we can't, we had no preparation. We had no prep. We knew that it was supposed to be windy today or last night and today, but we didn't realize how bad it was going to be until we got the high wind advisory and they said gusts up to 50 which when we lived in Arvada and Colorado, we would get gusts up to 80 and it was not a big deal because we were in an area, there's lots of trees and lots of houses. And so it kind of buffers that wind. But like we said here, we're in this wide open, you know, you can see as far as you can see and 50 miles an hour coming at these, uh, at, at our trailer and just our stuff was like pretty intense. So, yeah, so I was, pretty windy last night it was windy somehow Doug slept through it <laughs> I was having like on and off like fever dreams about having like blowing off a cliff and like picturing our stuff like blowing all over the neighborhood like I was having all these like nightmarish thoughts because I knew it was bad and you know our trailer was rocking it was like being inside an airplane in really bad turbulence if you've ever experienced that and uh apparently it lulls Doug to sleep <laughs> Yes, I was born in a windstorm. I guess so. So we uh, we woke up today. We knew there the winds had already started. We couldn't really do anything because when it's that windy, you can't even hold on to stuff. And sometimes it's not even safe to be outside in that. So we decided instead we really needed to do laundry. <laughs> so we went to town and did a whole bunch of laundry. And we were gone during the worst of it. And our neighbors actually 
we're kind of watching our, we have some storage tents that we have basically everything we own in. It's and those uh, Calvary tents that you see up on top of the hill. Yeah, they're, they're, they've, they've been great. We haven't had any issues with them, but we knew with the high wind that they could be an issue. They're not, you can't, we can't stake them into the ground or anything like that. They're just, they're strapped down. We strapped them down the best way that we thought we could. And we were just hoping for the best, but we knew there wasn't really anything we could do while the storm was happening. So we were gone during the worst of it. We got back and Doug's going to put a picture up here of what we came back to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and it, it would, could have been way worse. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the way I look at it. Yeah. Uh, they, these tents have already seen 25 mile per hour winds and they were unfazed by it, you know? So yeah, these... this was the extra push. And I think it's because the wind was coming in a different direction this mm -hmm. time also. Yeah, and the one tent, we, we don't have as much stuff in one of the tents and that tent has a lot of our outdoor stuff and tools and things like that. And it just happened to be the tent that got hit that he's shown the picture of basically the whole tent one of the legs i think snapped um and the whole tent shifted back about nine feet yeah it levitated so, yes it moved and so it exposed nine feet worth of stuff worth of our belongings yeah to... but most like she said most of its tools and that and if you let it yep. dry out without using it uh it'll be fine yeah but um, we're putting this on our epic fail videos because <laughs> <laughs> and we're already ready for the for the i told you so comments you know it's a <laughs> yeah we know we know but it was one of those things it's been on our minds and we kept thinking gosh we're really close to the end of winter and things are going to start warming up and calming down but then we do hear that there's a ton of wind in the spring so we went up we went back up there and it was just like pouring it was 34 degrees like I call it snane, which is like snow and <laughs> there, there's the cat. <laughs> it's like snow and rain mixed, like coming, driving at you. And, but we got the, we got everything tarped over and covered up really well. And we did kind of some temporary fixes on the tent. And then we're praying and hoping that tomorrow the weather kind of calms down and we're going to get up there early and take everything out and make sure nothing got ruined or that we need to do anything with it. And, uh, but the trick is it's supposed to be windy again tomorrow. So, yeah. so, uh, Carrie probably go into town and get some plastic bins or something like that. And I'm going to start taking th things out of that one tent. At least, uh, we're going to organize it. We've got enough, uh, uh, tools and stuff to weigh down that, that tent. And unfortunately half of the tools were in the other tent and half were in the other tent. Yeah. And we should have evened out the weight. So it was uh, yep. equal amounts in each tent. Yeah, we should have. And it's one of those things that we've been saying we need to, but we've <laughs> we've been so busy with everything yeah, else. Yeah, it's like and... the chicken whole thing, the pressure's on with the chicken house yeah. and that. So it's like, I was like, yeah, maybe tomorrow morning we'll go down there. And because I heard the rumors of the 50 mile per hour winds and, uh, and I actually was going to go there today and start working on it a little bit. And we ended up going to town instead. So we couldn't have worked in it though. You guys, no, it was nasty. Probably was not disgusting. <laughs> yeah. It was, and it's gross right now. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, so I pray think... for, pray for no wind and <laughs> sunny skies tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. And we'll try to get some more video footage in this week. I'm not even going to listen to the weatherman anymore. I'm just going to look up at the sky and look far off in the horizon. And if I see black clouds and you know, yeah. run for the hills we'll be better prepared for next time for sure yeah yeah so if you guys enjoyed this video <laughs> yeah please give it a like we appreciate that share it with anybody that you think is interested in what we're doing with homesteading and uh we will see you all soon yep see you